Hey everyone, Ryan here and welcome back to our orthodontic series. In this video, we're going to cover craniofacial anomalies. So prenatal growth and development consists of five stages that I've listed here, one through five. And there are an incredible amount of things that are going on in a relatively short period of time. I won't spend too much time on the details here, so let's focus on the highest yield content for the board exam, which is this column. Basically, what can go wrong in the abnormalities or anomalies associated with these certain stages of prenatal development. So syndromes and sequences are often confused with one another, so let me take a moment to clarify these two types of birth defects. A syndrome is generally defined as a well-characterized constellation or pattern of major and minor anomalies that occur together in a predictable fashion, presumably due to a single underlying etiology, which is usually genetic. For instance, Down syndrome, or trisomy 21, which has a chromosome number etiology, is a syndrome associated with a predictable pattern of anomalies that create a recognizable presentation that allows people to immediately suspect that diagnosis. A sequence, on the other hand, is a group of related anomalies that generally stem from a single major anomaly that alters the development of the related uh, tissues or structures. So Pierre Robin sequence stems from an underdeveloped mandible. That's the single major anomaly which then leads to displacement of the tongue to the back of the throat, which then leads to a potentially cleft palate, difficulty breathing and chewing, and so on. One thing leads to the next. So syndromes are like a recipe from a cookbook, whereas a sequence is like a row of dominoes, where one thing leads to the next. We'll be focusing mostly on syndromes in this video. So fetal alcohol syndrome is caused by exposure to high levels of ethanol during early development. Now, alcohol is a teratogen, which means if it's consumed by a pregnant woman, it can cause malformation of the embryo or fetus. So exposure of the baby to alcohol causes deficiency of neural plate tissues, which results in abnormal brain development and an overall smaller head, which is called microcephaly. Central nervous system problems that result can include difficulty with learning, communication, vision, and hearing. Abnormal facial features include a smooth philtrum, which is this ridge between the nose and the upper lip, a thin upper lip, horizontally smaller palpebral fissures, and that simply means the opening between the eyelids. And for the most important point for the board exam is mid-face deficiency, a deficiency of this part of the face. There's also an increased chance of cleft lip in these syndromic patients. treacher collins syndrome is caused by a genetic mutation which alters the development of neural crest cells causing an overall lack of craniofacial tissue. Specifically, you end up with a small underdeveloped mandible. And this is in the name, mandibulofacial dysostosis. Dysostosis means a failure of bone to develop properly. You can also look at this x-ray and see how this antigonial notch area right up in here is also very deep and how the mandible is smaller related to the rest of the skull. As far as the face, everything kind of droops down a bit. We have down slanted palpebral fissures, so the eyes are slanting down like this. We have an increased chance of cleft palate. It occurs in 35% of these syndromic patients, and the ears are often malformed as well. Microtia means small ear. Hemifacial microsomia is a loss, of, a loss of neural crest cells for some unknown reason during their migration. So notice how all of these first few syndromes we've talked about have been 
uh, neural crest problems. So we're very early on in the developmental process. Here we have the external ear and mandibular ramus and associated soft tissues that are deficient on the affected side or sides if it's both sides. So in this case, the patient's right side has been affected. We can see how the mandible has shifted over to that side because the ramus here is deficient. And also we have microtia, a small ear on that affected side as well. So trisomy 21 or Down syndrome is one of the most common genetic diseases. It's caused by non-disjunction, which leads to an extra chromosome number 21. Hence why it's called trisomy 21. We have three instead of two. This syndrome is characterized by certain physical features like mid-face deficiency is once again most important to know for the board exam. And you also get this time upslanted palpebral fissures, so the eyes are pointed upwards. So this is the complete opposite of uh, treacher collins syndrome, which has mandibular deficiency and downslanted eyes. Also, there's no increased caries risk for these patients, but they do have an increased periodontal disease risk. All right, next we're going to talk about a big one, cleft lip and palate. So a cleft is the result of a failure of fusion of tissues during early development. And let's start with cleft lip. So formation of the lip occurs in the fourth stage of craniofacial development. So this is weeks four, five, and six. The lip is derived from the medial nasal prominence in red here. So we can see part of the lip is being contributed by this MNP, medial nasal prominence, and the maxillary prominence, this green part, also contributes to those lateral portions of the upper lip. As a side note, the lateral nasal prominence, this blue part, LNP, forms the ala, or the sides of the nose on either side of the nostril. So cleft lip occurs when the maxillary prominence and, mandibule, and the medial nasal prominence fail to fuse with each other. So the MNP and the MP fail to fuse at this junction. And that's what leads to that cleft lip. So it's due to the location of these promin prominences, the cleft lip usually occurs off midline and is usually, but not always, unilateral. It can be bilateral, leaving an isolated island of tissue at the center, where that would be just that medial nasal prominence part has been separated from the maxillary prominence on either side. Here we see that there was proper fusion of those two segments on this side, improper fusion of, of those two segments on this side. And now let's go to cleft palate. So the primary palate forms at around six weeks in utero, while the secondary palate forms at around eight weeks in utero. So the lip is four to six, the palate is six to eight, which makes it a little bit easier to remember. So what is the primary and secondary palates? So the primary palate is this red part out in front, which also comes from the medial nasal prominence. So the primary palate, also sometimes called the premaxilla, the intermaxillary bone, or even the incisive bone, this carries lateral incisor to lateral incisor. Hence why if someone has cleft palate, they're often missing their lateral incisors because those teeth develop right at this junction that's affected. The secondary palate is this green part in the back. Originally, these two palatine shelves on either side are located laterally to the tongue in a vertical orientation. So you can think of them like doors that are swung wide open, and as the oral cavity grows taller, the tongue is moved downward, and it allows these shelves to close to a horizontal position and fuse at the midline. The palatine shelves begin to fuse starting at the incisive foramen, and they zip caudally or posteriorly as they fuse together. Incomplete cleft palate occurs when the palatine 
uh, the palatal shelves fail to fuse with one another. Com so that would be these two green parts fail to fuse with each other. Whereas complete cleft palate occurs where in addition to that, the primary palate fails to fuse with the palatal shelves. So there's a clean break either this direction or this direction or potentially both directions. There's a clean break between the left and the right sides of the palate. Now both of these uh, both of these patients, both cleft lip, cleft palate, and cleft lip and palate patients tend to be class three because if you have this kind of problem with development of the maxilla, the chances are it will also be deficient in an anteroposterior direction. And we'll talk more about class one, two, and three in future videos in the series. So Pierre Robin sequence is one of those uh, domino anomalies we discussed before. So you can think of the very first domino, the first uh, anomaly that's sort of kicking off the rest of the anomalies is micronathia, which is a small, a very small mandible. So this small mandible causes displacement of the tongue posteriorly toward the back of the oral cavity, which is called glossoptosis. And this abnormal tongue posture can interfere with the development of the palate, like we just talked about before. And those palatal shelves can't flip up and close at the midline. So we have an opening at the roof of the mouth. Now that tongue displacement and cleft palate also make a breathing and feeding much more challenging. So one thing leads to the next in sequence. Cruzon syndrome is an autosomal dominant inherited disease, and this occurs a little bit later on in development. It's a type of craniosynostosis, which refers to early closure of the cranial sutures. Now, craniosynostosis usually refers to a premature fusion of the cranial sutures along the top of the head, but in this and the next syndrome we discuss, we have premature fusion of both sutures at the top of the skull as well as in the maxilla. So this leads to, in Cruzon syndrome, a brachycephaly, which is this a shorter, squatter skull, and an underdeveloped midface. Once again, we have midface deficiency. Common features also include a frontal bossing, that's a prominent a forehead area, hypertelorism, which is increased distance between the eyes, and proptosis, which is bulging of the eyes out of the orbit due to that midface deficiency. You can also expect to have a class three skeletal relationship for this reason of midface deficiency. Apert syndrome is also an autosomal dominant inherited disease. Now it has a lot of the same features as Cruzon syndrome as another type of craniosynostosis. So you're, you're gonna see again, midface deficiency, frontal bossing, hypertelorism, and proptosis, with two exceptions. Acrocephaly, which is a tall skull instead of a short skull, and this Byzantine arch palate. So this is an uh, architectural reference. These Byzantine arches are known for being high, these nice, beautiful, high arches. And so we see in the oral manifestation a high vaulted palate that's also narrow. So this really high, narrow arch form of the palate. What really sets it apart, though, is this syndactyly, which is fusion of the fingers and toes, resulting in symmetric webbing of the hands and feet. So this syndrome is part of a group of syndromes called acrocephalosyndactyly. And we can piece this apart because acrocephalo refers to this skull pattern. And then, of course, syndactyly is what really sets it apart here this fusion of the fingers and toes. And lastly, let's cover Hurler and Hunter's syndromes. So they are two separate syndromes, but they're often tested together. They both have in common that they are mucopolysaccharidosis. 
So these patients experience a buildup of glycosaminoglycans in their lysosomes because their bodies have an enzyme deficiency and cannot properly break them down. How I remember this is that hurl is another word for vomiting. So you can think of someone gagging or something that makes them want to hurl. So hurl, gag, glycosaminoglycans. All right, so that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing to this channel for much more on dentistry. If you're interested in supporting this channel and what I do here, please check out my Patreon page. Thank you to all of my patrons here for their support. You can unlock extras like access to my video slides to take notes on and practice questions with explained answers for the board exams. So go check that out. The link is in the description. Thanks again for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.